One of the goals of life is trying to bring the beauty of who we are to other people. I'm going to be sharing with you with a lovely lady who's been able to touch the depth of her life and bring it to a lot of people in prison who have run into dead end streets. Stay tuned. <music> I don't know if you know, if uh, you've been watching this television show very often, my name is Father Michael Manning. I, I'm a bit of an actor. Um, I have to tell you that my, my great interest in uh, way back when has always been in theater and even studying and getting a degree in theater. And there's something very valuable about theater. Of course, I want to watch, watch the television programs that are there or I want to go down to the California theater, which is just by and see a live presentation. But there's something about a good actor that allows us to be able to know ourselves. Um, mm. When you see a, a good movie and there's really something uh, along with a great story that really moves you, and you think, whoa. You know? And if an actor can touch a nerve in their life, what happens is, whoom, they stick this mirror up in front of them. And all of a sudden, instead of looking at them, we're looking at ourselves. And you know, I think that that, I think that was the power of Jesus. When you, when you study the Gospels, you find that Jesus spent, well, Mark and Matthew, Mark and Matthew both say that he only taught by telling stories. Mm. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, when he would have a large group of people, that's all he did. And why was it that we would find maybe 15,000 people coming out from where they were and and wandering into, into wilderness just to listen to him tell stories. He told the stories and he touched the truth mm -hmm. and he became a beautiful mirror to all those people of God's goodness and God's love in a mighty way. Well, I didn't mean to talk so much because I want to get back to, the, to our <laughs> special guest today. Mary, God bless you. Thank uh, you for coming uh, and being with us. Thank you. It's my you've, pleasure. You've dedicated your life. You know, look, the beautiful lady you've come and you've given oh, your, you. yourself to the uh, the uh, the craft of acting, haven't yeah. you? Uh, yeah, pretty much. How did, how did that all get started? <laughs> About 25 years ago, actually, my first career, um, I was a high fashion runway model. So for several years, I couldn't eat. <laughs> oh my God! Very thin, underweight, but it, it was a, a wonderful time in the 80s. And how I, long did that last? Um, a good eight to ten years. Oh my actually. gosh! So it actually, oh, wow. Yeah, it was a long career, and it was back in the days where you know the models had to really project and be actors on stage. And I was uh, always a really shy person, and and always had to struggle with my confidence. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And um, and so I was told by my agent, why don't you take some acting classes? So. Um, I did, and that gave me tremendous amount of confidence um, on the stage and, and, and who I was. I think my goal in life was always to be comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. I don't know if you ever experienced that in life where you're just so nervous being yourself, you know? And um, so through that, um, I got to know myself through acting. And tell, me, tell me about that. I don't, what do you mean? Explain that to me a little bit more. Mm. Know yourself through acting. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you mean by that? I know. Sometimes people say, oh, they're just an actor. Well, really what true acting is, is what you just said. It's touching the truth of who you are. And in an acting classes, and there's a lot of different styles out there, it really is getting in touch with who you are. You know, uh, I had a great instructor, John Howard Swain, who said, you know, actors, we're doing something so intimate that mm. mo in public, we're doing something so intimate in public on stage and screen that most people avoid in real life. <laughs> you know, that's true. Isn't it, it? That's very true. It's, isn't it? Wow, it's yeah. true. It's true. So we have to be real, real brave in being in touch with our feelings, and but we don't do it just for ourselves, and we we do it like you're saying, so we can be mirrors, so we can make people laugh, and be characters that people can relate to so that they can heal themselves, you know? I think that film and stage is a place for people to forget about the troubles and just laugh. Yeah, we escape. It, we escape. Es escape, and escape. it also can be just for a moment for someone to go, wow, 
I relate. I relate to that character. And nobody else knows, you know, but in that moment I can relate to that character and there's some type of healing that's going on with that. There's a, an interesting story that when I was in the sixth grade, lived in Louisville, Kentucky, hmm. Louisville, and, and um, uh, I, my mom gave me uh, 50 cents, or no, 25 cents. You know, <laughs> uh, it was five cents on the bus to go down, five cents to wow. go back. Uh, five cents for the popcorn, and then the rest was for getting wow. into the show. Five cents you know, for popcorn. I mean, where, 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 yeah, what was that like? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but um, I went in and I saw a movie, and it was the movie. It was called The Miracle of Fatima. It was the it was a story of oh. when the Blessed Mother came to some girls in Fatima oh, over yes, in Portugal. Oh yes, yes, yes. No, I've I was, seen yeah, this that. Back, yeah, yeah. back in the fifties. So. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting there looking at the movie, you know, like yeah. this, and it changed my life. Yeah. A movie changed my life. Yeah. And then, yeah. I don't know if it was maybe three weeks later, uh, I went again, I got another quarter, I was able to get a quarter, I think I had to mow the lawn or something <laughs> to get my quarter to go down. And then, uh, and it was Humphrey Bogart uh, in a movie called The Left Hand of God. And I he was a missionary. Well, he, was, uh. he, was, no, well, he wasn't a missionary, he was a, a flyer that got, got shot down in China. Okay. And uh, so there he is with the communists around, wow. and his only way of getting out is pretending he's a priest. Oh my gosh! So he dresses up in the you know in the in the cassock and everything, and he pretends he's a priest because he's trying to, to get out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sitting there looking at it. Whoa! I want to be a missionary. Humphrey <laughs> <laughs> you know? Bogart yeah, inspired you. Know, well, but but it's, it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? That yeah, when you get a great actor. Mm -hmm. They can really just kind of turn your life around yeah. if they touch the depth of your heart. Yeah. Tell me, a, tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about this relationship with Christ in your life. Would you, would you share a little bit of that? Of <sighs> where, where were you, and then did anything happen to to bring you a greater depth of that experience? Well, I think my my parents were um, Roman Catholic, and so I've I've always had that upbringing um, of God in my life, um, of Spirit in my life, and um, I was the youngest of three. And, uh, Where was this? Where? Oh, I'm sorry, in uh, Las Gatas in Northern California. Okay. And uh, I just uh, had a wonderful family. I just, especially hearing the stories of, of the people in prison, I just see how grateful and, and how, um, hmm, d just how lucky I was to have such a great family. I mean, at Christmas time, we'd be at my grandma Mackey's house, and there must be like 40 people with the aunts and mm. uncles and cousins. Um, and so I, I've just always, of course, I took it for granted. We do. And until we don't have it anymore, we, we take things for granted. And my brother is probably the, the most inspiration, inspirational person in my life. He had stick fibrosis. Whoa. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, he was such a good brother. He was such a good person. He always said the most important thing is family and friends, really. You know, and especially in this economy that we're all facing, sure. you know, we have people, I have a friend that might lose his house, you know, and it's like, it's devastating. However, the most important thing is the love of God, the love of spirit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's it, you know, we can live in a tent, you know, as long as we have the love of our family and our friends, you know, and the people in our church, our communities. What and, about the love of God? Has, <laughs> did, 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 has God touched you saying, Mary, I really love you very much? I think so, through the, the people, um, especially like yeah. my, my brother, uh, he passed away 25, Ooh, 25 years ago of cystic oh, fibrosis. Boy. And so, boy, when you, you, know, you learn at a young age that you know, you know, we don't know when our time is going to be up. And yes, I think that's a great question because I've learned God's love through other people. Yes and uh, through my brother, through my father. My father, um, both him and my mother uh, teach RCIA. He, he passed away about five years What's ago. RCIA, what's that? Um, it's Catholic, they teach Catholicism. For how to get into the church or? It just, um, about the Catholic faith. Okay, okay. Uh, they're also communion ministers and. Oh boy, okay. Very, yeah, yeah. very Catholic. And uh, so, um, and through my father, just, um, he always had unconditional love for his for his kids. He always says that door is always open to you really? guys anytime wow. you want to come home. <laughs> so I really uh, learned unconditional love through my family, through my mom and my dad, and and my sister and my brother. Now I'm I'm kind of jumping around, but mm -hmm. uh, we started off with your acting and then moved to this. Yeah. Um, bring me up to date then a little bit about how acting then became a little bit of a passion in your life. Yeah. 
beyond uh, being a beautiful woman walking oh, down with gorgeous you. clothes on the uh, <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, on the, on the Nothing runway. I could afford today, <laughs> that's for yeah, sure. But yeah. um, I just, it was a nice transition into modeling to acting. And uh, my first stage play was I played Nurse Kelly in Harvey. Uh, you know, the imaginary rabbit, Jimmy yeah, sure, Stewart, sure, my sure, favorite sure, actor. Sure, sure, yes. um, and I just fell in love with it. You know, live theater, as, as you know, there's nothing like it. And um, just um, got into commercials, TV, film, and it's, it's wonderful. It's one of the hardest businesses because you get a job and you're employed for a day, <laughs> maybe yes, yes. a week if you're lucky, yes, yes, yes. and then you're unemployed again. So It could be going for a month or a year. You could go for a year with that, and so you... Yes. You have to hold on to the little that you can get, or the, the yeah. much that you can get, and see if that can hold you on. And create it yourself, you know, and that's yeah. why we have theater, so that we can be creative and work together in, in different theater companies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. We're, we're going to take a break. I've got a little okay. commercial that I want to do. And, okay. uh, but I would like to come back, because um, we, we build you in the beginning of being able to minister in prisons. And yeah. uh, I'm curious, this, okay. this acting gift that you have, mm. uh, now, how are you bringing that to prisons? And... Uh, that sounds a little challenging. <laughs> Stay tuned, and we're going to hear this, this next story. Pardon my Lenten smile. What do you mean, smile? Our understanding is that Lent is a somber time of negation and sacrifice. We hear the echoing words of John the Baptist calling out in the desert, Repent! We see the 40 days and 40 nights of Jesus in the wilderness and being tested by the devil at the end. In the midst of these gloomy prospects of the 40 days of Lent, Pardon My Lenten Smile, written by Father Mike Manning, offers you some hope. Yes, this offers you a Lenten smile. Don't be gloomy, because the Lord says, when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting except your heavenly Father who is hidden. And your heavenly Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. Do you want this Lent to be different? Pardon My Lenten Smile offers you the way to do this. Each day there is a quote from the day's scripture readings and a short reflection applying it to your everyday life. Filled with practical advice on how to live each day and make this Lent meaningful, it ends with a short and sincere prayer that you can call your own. By Easter, you will have a closer relationship with God. Father Mike Manning's book, Pardon My Lenten Smile, is going to put a smile on every face this Lent as we experience the Lord alive coming out of the tomb. We have got to smile, and that smile is to hang around on every face, every heart, and every soul for a long time. Get this book and bring a smile to your face and to the faces of everyone you love this Lent for your gift of $15 or more. Call the number on the screen. Get it today. Mary, God bless you. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an exciting life, my gosh, a model yeah. and now moving in, into television and moving on stage and mm -hmm. doing that and picking up a passion with the, the art of acting. And yeah. uh, as you said, you're working with the uh, executives and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But there's another aspect of that and you're, you're also involved in prison. Mm -hmm. You talk to a whole bunch of men who are prisoners. <laughs> And what in heaven's name can a lovely lady like you mm. do walking into a prison with a whole bunch of incarcerated men? Um, a lot. Really? Yeah. Um, I was introduced to, um, through Agape International Spiritual Center, um, they have a ministry called Freedom Light Prison Ministries. And they've been doing, I think, 15 years. And uh, I joined the ministries and we went to Terminal Island out in San Pedro and we'd give them like a mini service and there was always someone there that would give a message we would sing affirmations do some improv something fun and i just found that so empowering because what i have found why i've witnessed i'm still new to it but you know when a person is in prison they have nowhere to turn and no. so now they have to deal with whatever you know has gotten them there in my in my prison ministry it's it's a it's a matter of uh, stop running. 
yeah. a lot of times right. it's the prostitution and it's the drugs and it's the thievery and, and, and all yeah. the things. And, and it's just a frantic thing to make, make your life go on and, and pleasing the people that you're living with and, right. and trying to get along with them and oftentimes fear. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're stuck in a, in, right. a, in, a, in, a, in a cell. That's right. And there are long hours of just being yeah. quiet. That's right. Right. And um, where I am now is uh, downtown at the Los Angeles Metropolitan T Detention Center. And uh, about eight months ago, I taught a class in empowerment for the women. And now I'm teaching the men and women. So it's very interesting to have the kind of the same materials teach uh, w with the men. It's a 10 week program. And then with the women and the differences. Uh, yes, hello. <laughs> so I could write a book. <laughs> but, um, but it really is so inspiring because of the deep conversations and that you just wouldn't think. Like you said, people are thinking, oh, they're bad people, they're in prison. Well, They've made a mistake, a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we've all made mistakes, you know. We, we could have all probably in our life been put in jail. And so I, even if it's just planting a seed, you know, maybe there's some that I won't be able to change at all, but maybe there's one or two where I can, where I could at least, you know, plant a seed for them to return to who they are, return to the person God has created them to be, Amen. you know. Amen. And there was two weeks ago, we were, I start out with um, meditating so we could start off in a grounded place. Okay. <laughs> so we were meditating and everybody's closing so their eyes. So what would you do? What do you mean meditating? Like, oh, so you're in a circle. What, what do you say to get him into meditating? What, what, what does that mean? Uh, well, a lot of deep breaths first. Okay, just being quiet then. Just being, being quiet, yeah. So that's how we connect with ourselves, right? And so uh, just being quiet, connecting with themselves, a lot of deep breathing. So we stop the voices, we stop the conversations in our head, and we're able to get at one with us, the higher power, God. And um, I create a safe place for the, them to go to. I, I guide them through um, a visualization of creating a safe place for them, you know, whether you know, it's on a beach, it's on a lake, it's in the mountains. They create it and um, they establish it by the senses. What, is it, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? And it's really focusing every week and creating that safe place. And then we give, I give them affirmations to say, to say to themselves in that place. And maybe there's a week where we're working on letting something go. So I say, okay, in this moment, what is something you want to let go of? Name it. Now let it go. And so each week it's something else in that safe place that we do, whether we're letting something go, we're being grateful for one thing that somebody did for us. Um, what's one thing you would like to bring back in your life? That's why I did this last oh. Tuesday. What's one thing you'd like to bring back in your life? You know, it's just all about stopping the noise, stopping the voices, and now back to one, as they say yeah, in our yeah. business, back to one, back to God, back to universe, and say, you know, why am I here? What do I, wa what do I want in my life? And normally when we really say that, it's not a selfish thing, it's what do we want? We want peace, we want love, we want to be with our family. Okay, how do I do that? Now yeah. how do I do that? I'm in prison, I have addiction problems, you know, and it's just, you know, baby steps. And so through that visualization and meditation, then we come out of it. Um, but what I, what my first point was, is that about halfway through, I open my eyes because I want to make sure that everybody's, you know, not going on. Well, you go uh, halfway through already with eyes closed. Courageous. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Courageous. I, <laughs> I open my eyes just to look at the guys. This was just the guys. And all of them, their eyes were closed and they all look like babies. Mm. They're all babies again, you know, your, your sons and daughters. And it's like, yeah, that's what it is. It's the getting, return getting to back. who they are. Because all the other stuff, it's just, it's not important. And at the same time, now they have to do the hardest work. They have to repattern their life. And this last Tuesday, a gentleman from Boston um, was, was sharing, you know, he was saying, God, I'm just so scared. He goes, I want to be back with my family, with my kids. And he goes, but I'm so scared. Once I get back out, I'm going to, you know, start doing the drugs or whatever. And this other gentleman uh, who at the very beginning of the class weeks ago was so angry. Mm. He's saying, I'm angry with God. 
I am so angry with God. And he had every, he had reasons and all. But now this last Tuesday, he was calm, you know, and whatever work he's doing, he was able to be grounded. And then he stood up and in a very cohesive way, was able to minister to this other man. Wow. Wow. Because this man has addiction problems, right? A meth or something like that. And, and he's been in prison three months. You know, that's cold turkey. He doesn't have the right support he needs right now. And so, but he was able to stand up and say, I've been sober for 10 years. And through the love of his wife, who uh, sadly had passed away while he was in prison, um, you know, and he said, the thing that gives me strength is God. And he goes, every morning I get up and I pray. And he says the serenity prayer. And, um, and he goes, that's what gives me strength. And he goes, and I've done it. I've been sober 10 years. So what better witness is that to another inmate to say, uh, hey, I feel you. <laughs> I've been there, right. but now I've done it. And through the power of God and prayer, he's able to um, face life and, and stay sober. And, um, you know, I, I just pray for him every day that, you know, they're able to live a successful life. And that's where I feel as a community, we really fail because we don't give enough support to the people when they get out. There's these halfway houses. And so I've been familiar with how things are done there. And there's some good ones and not so good ones. You know, I think people just judge way too much. Oh, he's some, went to prison. We don't want him working here or yes, her yes, working yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know what? Yeah, you do. You know, a lot of people, you know, they just need the chance. Doesn't everybody want a second chance? Amen. You know, I think everybody deserves that. You know, we all fall. We all fall. Yeah. So uh, if there's any way I can try to help with the tools, because I've been so grateful with teachers in my life that, that help me get back up again, you know, so that uh, if I can help in any way with these, you know, inmates, these people that are stuck in these horrible cells, you know, to change their life back around, I, I'm grateful to be able to be in that position. There's something I, I want to ask you, though. Um, Beautiful, thank you. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm touched by what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what does that say to Mary? Uh, what goes on when you experience this in your life? Um, they're oh. all they're reaching a depth of, of yeah. honesty and, and a confrontation with themselves. Does that happen to you too? I mean, I'm looking for yeah. what would be your motivation of keeping on doing this? Oh yeah, because ugh, I, I think one of my darkest times was when I was going through my divorce. And that was 10 years ago. And um, gosh, I just think it, there's nothing worse than being in darkness. You know, we call it darkness, you know, yes, whatever that sure, is, sure, sure. you know. It's so hard. Yes. It's so hard, you know, and we, whatever. People, alone. people contemplate suicide or whatever. And it's just, it's, it feels horrible being down. But when you get back up again, it's so empowering and it feels so good that you want to help everybody do the same and thing. That's your motivation. And so that's my motivation. That you've been able to get up and do that. Gosh, yeah. you're a beautiful example, Mary. Oh. God bless you for doing that. Well, thank you. And me doing this stuff keeps me focused on the positive, and, and that's what keeps me standing up. If I don't have my purpose, then it's, it's no good. I just think it's real important for people to find out what their purpose is in life and, and follow that purpose, because that's there's a great song by, um, are you familiar with Kathy Tricoli? No. Oh, yeah, yes, I do. Yes, 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 oh, she, I have. She has yes. everybody go get oh, this. She does some Catholic singing, huh? Oh. Catholic. Yeah. Well, and she's got this song, Go, um, go Light My Candle, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the message is, you know, light your candle inside and share it with everybody because there's some people that their, their light inside is starting to dwindle and you need to go in there and help light it for them. You know, I think that's what our purpose is in life, you know, is to, to, to keep the light burning. To keep the light burning. And, yes. and then if for the rest of our lives, we're going to have moments where the lights going to start to go back Precisely. down again. So we need to keep it going and try to take care of ourselves, you know, and, and, and I think the best way to take care of ourselves and keep our light burning is, is by helping others. Amen. Yeah. Mary, we're, I'm going to go back to another commercial. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you must. <laughs> if we must. But then I want to come back, and you know what we do? We get a lot of people that uh, share their pain with us by mm. uh, giving us phone calls yeah. and also with um, writing emails and whatnot. Okay. And I want to bring those in and I want to pray over them. Would, would, oh. you, would you pray with me over oh, those? I would be Let's honored to, yes. Stay tuned, and we're going to be praying for you and for some of the people that you love. But uh, listen to this message. We'll be right back. Pardon my Lenten smile. 
Our understanding is that Lent is a somber time of negation and sacrifice. We hear the echoing words of John the Baptist calling out in the desert, repent. We see the 40 days and 40 nights of Jesus in the wilderness and being tested by the devil at the end in the midst of these gloomy prospects of the 40 days of Lent. Pardon My Lenten Smile, written by Father Mike Manning, offers you some hope. Yes, this offers you a Lenten smile. Each day there is a quote from the day's scripture readings and a short reflection applying it to your everyday life. Filled with practical advice on how to live each day and make this Lent meaningful, it ends with a short and sincere prayer that you can call your own. By Easter, you will have a closer relationship with God. Get this book and bring a smile to your face and to the faces of everyone you love this Lent for your gift of $15 or more. Call the number on the screen. Get it today. Mary, you were just mentioning there's a, a special lady at the prisons that is asking for your, our prayers. Would yes, um, Abby, uh, she has her sentencing uh, next week and she was in my class a year ago. She's been at the t detention center for two years waiting to get uh, sentenced. And she's been an inspiration to all the girls. So uh, just want to pray for her. All right, let's, let's remember Abby. Mm -hmm. I have also, and thank you very much for taking the time to pick up the telephone and call. Thank you very much for writing emails. Uh, know that this is very important, that you share what's going on in your heart. And I mm -hmm. really believe that prayer makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm pledging prayer to the people here at staff. We're praying. Mary and I are going to pray for you. Please get in touch. And also, uh, pull out your, uh, your application, your app, if you would. Remember the I God today. I'll come at you every day with my app if, you, if you're willing to, to plug it in. I God today and do that. Look at this, look at this, Mary. With Sarah from California. Uh, she wants protection for her family, spiritual guidance. Okay. Sheila from Washington, a crisis of faith of her friend. There's dementia in the early stages and she's mm. 80. Yeah. Uh, Andra is from Kentucky, conversion back to Christian belief for her husband, James. Mm. And David in Ohio, several disabilities, health, health issues. Mm. Let's just pray, let's, Lord. Okay. Please come into the, to the lives of these people. We're confident that you love us and that you believe in us. Help that confidence to be able to move in a mighty way of healing into minds, souls, hearts, and beings. Yes. So I ask a special blessing on Mary. May she always continue mm. to do great work and be blessed with that. And may Jesus' love for you make you smile. Thanks, Mary. God bless. Good job. God, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.